Thank you very much, Emanuele, and um, yeah, thanks for the nice introduction from you, also from the Finnish Ministry. Of course, it's uh, always a great pleasure to hear uh, to to stand here in front of you after such an introduction, calling for a new strategy, and so on and so on. So, on. <laughs> but of course, we cannot avoid it like coming from the Commission. So, dear organizers, dear, I, I'm trying to um, share with you some um, some. Um, some news, maybe not really news, but some, some views uh, about the Commission's current alcohol uh, policy and maybe some words about the possible future in the Commission about this file. And also, of course, uh, most importantly, the, the place of RARHA in this uh, context. So dear organizers, dear RARHA participants, uh, dear colleagues, um, dear uh, hosts from the, from the Finnish uh, ministry side. Of course, we all know that uh, harmful alcohol use has devastating consequences all over the EU and reducing alcohol-related harm remains a challenge for, for all of us. The Commission is fully aware of this fact. We know that it's very important to avoid this harmful use of alcohol and the major impact it has on people's lives and productivity and the economy and the society as a whole. We also know that um, very well, that alcohol is related to more than 200 different uh, diseases and medical conditions. Europe is still the heaviest drinking region of the world. We know that more than 120,000 Europeans die prematurely due to alcohol each year. And also like 8,000 only die uh, because of uh, drink driving, uh, they die behind the wheel. Uh, concerning uh, the effect of alcohol on productivity, we know that it uh, leads around 1% of loss in GDP, according to OECD estimates. The societal costs of harmful alcohol consumption, for example, in absenteeism in work, treatment, and the costs of crime related to alcohol abuse are estimated around 160 billion uh, euros per year. And we didn't mention yet the human suffering, all the human suffering caused by alcohol. Although consumption has decreased in the EU over the last decades, it's uh, still increasing steadily and significantly in Central and Eastern Europe. And although at a different pace, uh, there is still some increases in the Nordic countries. Moreover, it's even more alarming that more and more kids are getting drunk and more and more teenagers, and not only teenagers, are binge drinking as well. The Commission is aware that uh, this needs to be changed and uh, we know also that this harm and cost can be prevented, so we are more important that we do something. We cannot afford to lose lives. We cannot afford to lose money to alcohol abuse. We cannot sit and do nothing while our citizens, uh, including our children, the next generation, waste up their lives and their future in alcohol. We know also that there are uh, some, some areas where we have to work together at all levels of policy making. Most importantly, I would mention availability of alcohol, drink driving, education, awareness raising, communication, labeling, advertising, marketing, even taxation, online sales, illicit trades, just to mention a, few, mention a few. But we also know that we need to address these issues together at all levels and across all policies. The European Commission is uh, playing its part the member states of the EU, the regions, the municipalities, including also the civil society, has also a part to play to prevent and fight the harm caused by alcohol consumption. The Commission, of course, took note of the various calls uh, for reinforced action in this field, coming from the member states, including the uh, scoping paper produced by CNAPA, and of course also the Council conclusions, also the European Parliament's resolutions, and we also, and also know that NGOs would like to see also more action on this field. However, we all know that the principal policy responsibility to tackle alcohol abuse is with the Member States. The Commission can only support the Member States in their efforts to reduce alcohol-related harm and tackle not only the consequences of alcohol, but also the reasons which led to it. This support is particularly important in areas that cannot be addressed solely at national level. Action at EU level should help citizens to have a better life, should reduce the burden on health and social systems, and should also help member states to reach the 10% reduction in harmful use of alcohol by 2025, a target which was agreed in the context of the WHO work. 
However, uh, um, my role to say that also that at this stage the Commission hasn't taken a decision on how exactly to continue work and which will be the priority areas where tangible progress and results can be achieved in the next years. Of course, many of you, they know, because as I said, I will not uh, tell you here many news, actually. I'm just summarizing the, I'm just giving you a state of play report today. Many of you, kn of you knows that uh, there are some, some options that are being considered for the future. For example, the Commission could be better prepared to play a bigger role in identifying country-specific needs based on better analysis of data to help identify specific needs and EU tools that can be mobilized to have. The Commission is also considering to address all risk factors, alcohol, nutrition, physical activity, tobacco and so on, together in a coherent framework. But as I just said, the decision has not yet been taken. So I just give you some views uh, about how in the meantime the Commission continues its work in, the three, in three main specific areas, basically, where a clear added value can be provided. This is also based, these areas are based also in the, in the, in the calls from the member states, which is included also in the, in the uh, scoping paper that we received from many of you, like uh, Knappa members. <laughs> One of the first areas in this is to, bright, to provide platforms for exchange and discussion on best practices for member states' experts, most importantly and basically in the Committee on National Alcohol Policy and Action, we know it also as Knappa and uh, also to provide a platform to stakeholders. The CNAPA is currently implementing its action plan on uh, youth drinking and on heavy episodic drinking. And the Commission, with active involvement of WHO, is committed to facilitate the monitoring of this action plan. It will come to the end of 2016, so with the WHO's uh, involvement, we will provide a report on these uh, activities in 2017. The Commission at the moment is considering also like to find a new format for the active, uh, constructive involvement of uh, stakeholders. We don't know yet the outcome of this work, obviously, but uh, one thing is uh, for sure that uh, the renewed EU Health Policy Forum and more importantly its IT platform will also be used as an opportunity for the civil society to discuss public health issues including alcohol. The second area I want to highlight here is the Commission's work pursuing a hat in all policies approach in areas where the EU has a real competence. Just to mention two uh, current examples here, DigiSante is currently engaged uh, in the ongoing evaluation with a view for a possible revision of the directive of uh, harmonization on the structure of alcohol excess duties and the audiovisual media services directive. Thirdly, and uh, lastly, let me mention the significant role of the EU health programs and its financial tools in supporting the EU work to reduce our correlated harm. The consecutive health programs, we know all that, have made and will make possible that projects and uh, other activities can be properly funded and developed. I can start maybe to mention two more of the most recent projects, which is one of them is the Eyes on Ages and national policies related to uh, age limits and the study, and the other one is the study on the presence of health-related messages on uh, the labels of alcoholic beverages. But I could also highlight uh, the uh, ongoing extensive uh, cooperation between the Commission and OECD and WHO, which are also uh, supported by the, by the health program. For the, for the current uh, situation, I can say also that uh, two projects targeting availability and accessibility of alcohol like beverages to reduce binge drinking and use drinking are due to start soon using about 1 million euro the Commission provided in the 2015 work plan of the health program. And uh, a similar amount is planned to be reserved also in this year uh, in the health program. But most importantly, of course, let me come to the main point why we are here today. And let me talk a little bit about the current joint action to reduce alcohol related harm, which is also co-founded by the health program. This joint action was prepared in co close cooperation with the member states and commission experts and received also 50% co-funding from the member states. So not only uh, the commission is involved financially in this, obviously, so you all know that. The topics of the work packages were identified based on the member states' experts' proposals and also agreed by the commission. 
thanks to the great work of the coordinators, the package, work package leaders, and all the experts from the 28 member states, but also from WHO, OECD, Eurocare, and other partners, the deliverables of the joint action, they are taking their final shape now as we're closing to the end of uh, 2016, when the joint action will be finished. I can assure you that the Commission is looking forward uh, impatiently to, to, to the results with, uh, and with great expectations. And why? Why do we do that? Because there is no doubt about that a solid standardized monitoring approach providing a basis for comparative assessment of progress in this field is fundamental for all policymakers at all levels to see the trends and developments and adjust appropriately their policies if needed. We also need to see the results because it's also equally important that the existing heterogeneity in the use of national low drinking and other drinking guidelines and, for example, the definitions of standard drinks is reduced based on solid scientific evidence. Also, of course, a toolkit of evidence-based good practices that are well described, well evaluated, and able to deliver positive results will be very much welcomed at all levels of policymakers as well. With all its uh, tangible deliverables and with all the EU member states' active involvement, joint action <coughs> RARHA is in the Commission view an excellent example of uh, how the Commission can support member states' action to reduce alcohol-related harm focusing on specific results, respecting subsidiarity, and delivering a clear EU-added value at the same time. It's not a secret and I can uh, share with you, um, I told you also in the last uh, couple of days, that uh, due to the all carefully selected topics and the relevant deliverables, also Commissioner Andrikaitis is following the work with great interest and also planning to participate in the closing conference of the joint action which shows, I guess, also the interest of the Commission in this work and uh, the, the, the support what, what, what we're ready to provide us in the future and also we provided so far. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, keeping in mind that this joint action will be finished soon and uh, I would encourage you, all RARHA participants and all partners, to continue your work with the same enthusiasm and that has been shown since the start of this work. And uh, I hope and uh, that, that this will, I, I'm sure also, that let this, this, this all coordinated efforts will make this joint action, uh, joint action a success story. The Commission is convinced that all the coordinated efforts in the joint action, complemented with the multi-stakeholder, multi-sectorial uh, and uh, strong health in all policies approach uh, at all uh, level of policy making, will indeed contribute to reducing alcohol-related harm in the European Union in the future. In this spirit, I wish you all the energy, commitment, dedication and discipline to produce tangible results and successfully finish this job. Um, I look forward to hear the, the latest news from you today and uh, I wish you a good meeting and good discussions today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attila. And we are before the time schedule, so we have the opportunity also to make some uh, uh, question. There is a. There was, I have a visit of the other. Did I hear well that you said that the Commission was uh, considering to harmonize excise duty? Did no. you? No, no, I didn't say that, sorry. No. No, okay. No. <laughs> Well, I, I, I was wondering. Um, the next question was, um, uh, you like, as a commission, the monitoring system uh, in uh, EU. Uh, are EU, uh, the commission, are they uh, considering uh, financing parts of, of uh, the monitoring system also in the future? I mean, I don't know which part you mean, but you know that also now the, the monitoring uh, done by WHO is co-financed by the commission. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, the joint action monitoring system. Ah, you, know what you mean in the future? Yeah. Yes, we, we know that from the side of EMCDDA that they're planning to uh, incorporate into their work in the future this uh, questionnaire that you are developing or this survey methodology. 
but we still need to see how exactly the financing will go. So I cannot give you any commitment or any uh, hard facts on this right now. Okay. Thank but we're considering, yes. Okay. That's good. Question? Happy that you're safe now. Yeah, but I'm here still <laughs> today, so. <laughs> It's not usual to have so few questions uh, with the Commission. <laughs> okay, thank you, Attila. Thank you so much.